conflict with uh, his neighbor uh, that is for the northern part of Yemen, who is in a, in a in conflict with them. The country is split in two uh, big entities that we call AA and Sahara, with uh, is um, sort of like uh, the de facto and the IRG, the internationally recognized government, with the de jure. Uh, in terms of population, the breakdown is uh, two thirds, one third. Means just to keep you in. In, in mind that means when we speak about the, the de facto is why we have a, a huge pool of uh, beneficiary and population and I think this is quite important is why uh, uh, many position uh, senior position uh, uh, for UN agencies, for uh, INGO, are located in Sana because, uh, in terms of access, we are speaking access to uh, more than two thirds of the population. Yemen, in terms of geography, is uh, um, where we have the de facto, that means is a mountainous area. And uh, and um, <clears throat> coastal area and desertic part in um, in the east of the country. I, I did that very quickly in order to not uh, go into detail. The conflict conflict is um, is uh, was simmering for many many years, but uh, during the last seven years uh, we had a huge intensification of fights. We have uh, some hotspots. Uh, we have a uh, six hotspots where we have uh, constantly uh, some fights. Uh, occurring not only in a rural area but also in the urbanized area and uh, maybe for those who follow Yemen they, they will be familiar with a name like Marib with one of the cities with the most disputed because uh, is a city with uh, controlling the, the petrol and gas extraction. That was uh, just a few uh, reminder from from last year and uh, uh, I don't know who is going to get it and we can go for the next slides. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have in Yemen is uh, due to our relation with authorities, we are not capable to get a baseline assessment. That means uh, we have a lot of assessments, more than 60 per, per year, but they are localized. That means they are on district and government level. We were never able to unify it. It's not due to a lack of funding or a lack of a partner. It's due to a lack of authorization because collecting information in the de facto control area is always uh, wrongly perceived and very challenging. And is why it means uh, we we had to, to adapt our humanitarian need of a view according to the situation where we have a lot of information but not unified. That means we have this constant reading of, of the report and try to consolidate. And when we, we last year we, we we notice the situation, we decide to organize our need of a view according to what we call the lens, the three lens. Is, uh, the first one is uh, the district impacted by armed violence and is directly with, uh, with some fight, but also uh, the big pole of, uh, of um, displacement, that means Sana, there's a lot of displaced in Sana, in Ibs, that's a big city where is aggregating the, the displaced, and that will be one like sort of one of the lands. And this one is uh, is really focusing on on the, um, on the conflict and uh, all the the related um, factors of the conflict. And uh, um, we we estimate that means we have 5.1 uh, people uh, in need on it. And, it's, and on this 5.1, we have a 4 million of IDP. The figure is uh, heavily challenged by everybody because we have. Um, two government, de facto and de jure, who are producing their own figures and uh, we are systematically trying to cross-check uh, per district or per government and going back to the, the, the smallest uh, prehensible uh, geographical entity in order to to, um, to, to to confirm these figures. But that is always, we, we are fully aware about our limits, but uh, is how we, we try to assemble uh, this lens. And uh, this one, this lens one is uh, is really related to, uh, to the emergency. And uh, we did classify our CVT score. Can we shift to the second slide, please? Yeah, the second one is uh, is it was to to uh, to uh, to reflect uh, the climate and natural hazards. That means in Yemen uh, we have some mountains around 3,000 meter high, and uh, during the winter you can get some temperature going below zero. That means I, I know that means for from outside it, it sounds very very strange, but uh, already Sanaa is 2,500 meter high, 
and uh, when you you pass the three or four months of winter, you can uh, really feel this drop uh, of um, of temperatures. And of course, for for the IDPs, those who are living under uh, a pl plastic sheeting uh, or inside uh, an emergency shelter kit or a tent, uh, that is, uh, is, is for us something quite important. But it's affecting also uh, our host community. And we decided to merge climate and natural hazard because we have also uh, not so much this year, but last year we had a very uh, serious flood uh, episode affecting uh, um, around uh, 300,000 uh, uh, individuals for the floods. That means we, we decide to regroup all these factors, uh, as we call lens to that means climate and the natural hazards. Uh, the cluster is still in charge to coordinate that, and uh, and sometimes we have people also who are uh, um, concerned by the lens one, that is the uh, armed conflict and the climate. But it was indispensable to get two approach uh, because the way to respond, the way to engage uh, is totally different. And uh, here we had the two, two and a half million uh, and people in needs. Uh, we have uh, um, a huge backlog for, for um, a theoretical projection of uh, things re related to the extreme temperature. But uh, uh, it's more or less how, how we compose it. And the third lens that I would like also to present today, if we can go to the, the, the next slides. Yeah, is uh, is we call that long-term assistance, and on, on this uh, we are fully aware that maybe is not proper wording, but we have more and more need, and I will uh, I will detail that more uh, during the presentation, where uh, the situation is stranded. That means we are still uh, uh, delivering a huge of emergency assistance when. Um, in one point, uh, we uh, all know the solution is coming from a, another approach, more based on transitional or on long term. Um, is we can, uh, and and that for us is is quite important to to look because uh, if not, we we don't start to get an exit strategy of the of the cluster and the coordination of the cluster, and uh, and this is a uh, is every year is more acute. This needs to to. Uh, to initiate some uh, transitional uh, approach is uh, is critical, and uh, we are foreseeing that this uh, this lens will will keep it. Uh, we will not say growing, but uh, because we are also uh, aware about um, the funding, but the the duty to develop pilot approach is still remaining. We will have to, to mention that means in Yemen we have only an HRP. That means we don't have uh, all the um, other funding or. Um, and a response mechanism for development of recovery, we are still uh, uh, ruled by only one document with the HRP. And, uh, and probably the desert means we we'll get more consequent action from the colleagues of World Bank uh, uh, and also the, the colleagues from, uh, from related to uh, to the um, development and recovery, uh, this lens probably will be deactivated. But up to now, we we have to reflect it because if not, there is no there is no way we can uh, uh, capture a minimum of data. That means um, every time as we do a, a lens, we we are looking about, uh, of course, the traditional exercise, acute need and and uh, moderate needs, and uh, we we did severity score. Um, <clears throat> I can share, or you can look also on our website, uh, on the women, Yemen page, uh, the, um, the precise uh, map on it, but that is uh, something that I wanted to, to show because I know that uh, some other clusters do not uh, use the same methodology. We had to develop it in order to, to reflect these three families of, um, of needs, and, uh, and that is uh, always um, underlying our, our, the development of strategy. I mean, so if we can shift to the, the next slide, please. Just briefly to a few words on the on the summary of the shelter and NFI response. That means uh, uh, we had uh, uh, 7.3 million of people in need for all the three lands, and up to now, uh, I think that is the figures uh, from uh, from um, from June. Um, that means we have only uh, uh, 0 0.7 million assisted. But uh, people in need is not the people targeted uh, uh, because we are fully aware about the financial restrictions. We are aware about the uh, implementation capacity of the partners. And uh, and usually our target is uh, is in between. That means is around three millions. That means uh, uh, we we are lagging in terms of response uh, this year, uh, mainly due because uh, um, done. Um, Partners had some difficulty on uh, on uh, on fundraising, and uh, if the the fund were received, they were received uh, in May and uh, and June from some of them. I mean, so we don't have so much uh, um, the 
the um, targeting what is a media review was uh, initially estimated on 1.5 million. And uh, one thing is very interesting because we spoke always about uh, monetization, uh, to monetize assistance or the cash assistance. We have a huge component of cash and this is coming because uh, we have uh, several partners uh, to tackle the displacement in the urban area while you using uh, rental subsidies or cash for rents. That means this uh, semi-conditional, I will not say it's fully conditional because uh, is more uh, with an intention than a condition. It means uh, checking a bit uh, uh, where the people are living uh, and programming and adapting the, the rental subsidies according to the family and according to the city because there's a big disparity in terms of, uh, of rent. But that is a, is a, is a huge part uh, that we have. And there is also another, another explanation that means um, um, the de facto and also the de jure, both governments uh, are extremely, um, I can say that, uh, uh, interfering uh, with, uh, with uh, many um, assistance. And uh, on this case, uh, donors, like the common pool funds, for example, uh, put a ceiling in terms of procurements. That means uh, the, it was a sort of a shift from uh, in kind to monetize in order to be capable to for, for many organizations to, to absorb the, 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 the funding and to deliver assistance, adapting from an in-kind uh, uh, service to a monetized service. But that cannot be done uh, in, uh, everywhere. We have still many districts, especially in desert, where the distance to local market or local bank are so uh, huge. We speak about three or four hour drive minimum. That means uh, we are still uh, in need to get uh, significant in-kind assistance. Um, we have, as a, as a general uh, opinion, that means we, we are still mainly in pure emergencies. That means emergency shelter kits is uh, the core NFI kit, the bedding kits. And so, uh, this type of approach, uh, because even if we have this intention and the strategy to, 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 to shift, uh, the volume and the nature of the of the conflict is still uh, reminding us. That means we have to, to satisfy in priority uh, uh, life-saving intervention. Uh, just a uh, uh, figure, uh, last year we had around also uh, 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 between 300 and 400,000 uh, people were newly displaced. When I say 300 to 400,000, because there's multiple displacements, what we call that newly displaced, that means those were just uh, displaced in 2020. That is just to give you uh, what is uh, the yearly uh, newcomers, if we can say, uh, in the in the assistance, and that is uh, is obliging in terms of strategy to to focus a lot on contingency and uh, response capacity, and that is uh, is one of the specificity of uh, of human. Uh, uh, shelter clusters, that means we uh, know that many uh, solutions are uh, lay with uh, uh, some more transitional or long-term approach, but we are still constantly uh, bound to, to satisfy uh, the, the life-saving intervention. That means after a flood, after a new displacement, to be able to, to deliver the assistance to the affected population. And, uh, and that is making sort of a duality with, uh, with uh, really um, um, driving uh, the strategy of the clusters. And we have these two aspects, and uh, we are uh, always going between one and the other one, trying to, to, to find a long-term solution, but still uh, every rain uh, trying to, uh, to make an assessment and to, uh, to try to identify the number of affected population and to organize a response. Uh, last year, we were presenting what we call the 72 hours response hashtag. The hashtag that means we we had a, a sort of internal policies uh, uh, trying to, to treat from the first time that we hear about uh, a referral to the truck hitting the ground uh, loaded for, with goods to, to, to assist the, uh, the population, 72 hours. That means uh, taking the information, verification, discussing authorization with the different authorities, mobilizing the partners, mobilizing the stock. And, and we try to get that. That is still uh, in our gene, in our DNA. And, uh, and that is done uh, mainly with uh, the subnational coordinators who are doing a fantastic job because even if it's aid, uh, our colleague in, uh, in Sada, who is a city on the northern part of, uh, of, um, of Yemen, who is suspected to get a serious flood, already uh, pre-informed his partners and tried to keep some um, 
some uh, some team on duty. That is uh, is still really really a big part of our coordination and our bread and butter of the cluster. Um, then uh, we had also another big issue. I mean, it's, uh, because uh, Yemen is under embargo, because uh, there is a problem of liability, uh, we have very little investments on, on the durable and long-term solution. That means uh, is is a challenge, and uh, we try, and we don't give up. But uh, it, it's a challenge to try to to address uh, uh, shelter, and I will say that after that, more than shelter is habitat problem uh, on the on the transitional on the long term approach, uh, mainly due because we have uh, housing and tenure property. Uh, uh, situation with extremely difficult. Uh, finding land is uh, always a challenge. Well, it's not only in Yemen, it's everywhere in the world, but in, uh, in Yemen, they have a very specific law and very specific uh, 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 setup who is making a challenge. And of course, when you want to mobilize uh, for core housing in order to, to break the cycle of emergency and to be finding solution for people who are stranded for, for eight or nine years, because I say, I mean, seven years is when the clusters were fully activated, but before that, uh, we had already some trouble and some displacements. That means this approach is extremely difficult to advocate uh, because we don't have a basic uh, a condition, I mean, like a guaranteeing HLP. But nevertheless, we we had some uh, last year some uh, some uh, some projects, and we have more and more partners who try uh, to step into this. Uh, uh, this approach uh, with some co-housing using uh, mud brick, uh, Adobe block, um, and trying to 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 be more uh, in line with the cultural uh, specificity of Yemen. That means trying to look about family composition and and looking more the shelter problem not only about to give a, a, a structure a solution to protect the people but looking also uh, how they can be integrated that means with all the the other problematic related to income generation activities the livelihood linked to the local communities and and um, and that is uh, is something that is we really believe strongly believe on here with all the discussion with um, on the cluster coordination team with the partners with the SAC member and with the subnational but is a is a, a message which is extremely difficult to pass may we shift to the next slide please and that is just to give you as a we say three phase of shelter intervention uh, uh, means we we had uh, 96 and 95 percent 96 percent of emergency that means with a, a lifespan of solution were very very short and with uh, leading us to get some uh, some backlog of uh, recurrent needs coming uh, on a, on a, on a regular way to to go and uh, and that is why we want also to to reduce and uh, then uh, we had a very uh, limited number only three percent of a transitional uh, mainly t shelters uh, um, that is something was like one percent last year I means so we we had an increase but that is a way that means we can uh, we can reach this type of solution, we can still negotiate because uh, 36 months is something with giving enough guarantee to local communities and uh, local authorities. Of course, we, we are struggling with um, with um, conceptions that the IDP are, are a burden for communities and we have to break and uh, and this is why uh, uh, 36 months was decided because it's more or less the first agreement, but usually we are making a tacit uh, reconduction. So means after 36 months, uh, in many, many cases, uh, they are not evicted, but they can also uh, try to, to stay furthermore. Um, and uh, we had only uh, one percent of a long-term permanent. And long-term permanent, we put also the house repair inside, uh, and that is linked to uh, the return problem because on the four million of IDPs that I mentioned previously, we have uh, um, uh, a bit more than one million so could be considered as IDP returning or IDP who start the process of returns and it's maybe not uh, sedentarizing in their place of origin, but uh, who already shown interest. Uh, through different surveys that we heard to to go back uh, or, or we are commuting that's that is a situation that we have especially uh when the people were displaced uh, only 10 or 15 kilometers from the contact line uh commuting uh linked to a seasonal uh, harvesting seasons uh, linked to uh, some uh, some livelihoods uh, that means uh, is why we we add this uh, one percent. But uh, if we are making a quick math, we we should get something around 25 percent in the ideal world. But we have only one percent because we are uh, facing the situations that are previously uh, detailed. 
And uh, now we are working more and more how we can shift from one uh, of the category to the other one. That means uh, a lot of discussion with the partners come uh, saying, you start with a, a first assistant with an emergency shelter kit and uh, how we make an upgrade to a transitional and then also in transitional uh, to remove uh, part of uh, the fragile materials and to substitute it for example, uh, replacing the bottom of the wall of the was initially in plywood by mud brick. Uh, that are the discussions that we try, but they are really strongly linked by the context. That means the depend of the village, depend of the district, depend of the relation with authorities and communities, and uh, and the different type of agreements that we can get it. But that is more or less what is a. Uh, the, the actual um, conversations that we have uh, with uh, with uh, all the, the key partners, IOM, DRC, NRC, ACTED, uh, and, and trying to look, uh, not going straight maybe to the end of the process, but to, to say, okay, people were receiving two years ago uh, an emergency shelter, so we are not going to make a, um, a just a maintenance, but we will look how to, to increase the quality and to shift on, on transitional shelters. That means we try to not go with a, a standardized kit, but more uh, our guidance are more redacted in terms of uh, of indicators in terms of square meters, in terms of uh, uh, lifespan duration, uh, in order for for each agency to be capable to reflect uh, in their own design uh, the intervention means uh, they have a certain liberty to adapt the kids. We just give them like a, a general indication of how much should cost the kids, uh, the kids plus minus 10 percent. That means they they have indication, but it's extremely important because as I mentioned uh, as an introduction, Yemen you have a coastal area where it's 50 degrees uh, during the summer or under the shadow in data for sample and if you go uh, on a mountain on 3000 3500 uh, even if we are in July now uh, at night it can be can be pretty chilled I mean so we have a very uh, I would not say a wide range of climates but we we have uh, we have a sufficient uh, um, separation between the desert and the coastal area and the mountainous area uh, and uh, that leads uh, the decision to get each agencies to reinterpretates uh, their kids according to the place of intervention. Um, may we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, that's, that's just uh, <clears throat> an idea about uh, the key priority for the shuttle response. That means uh, we have, of course, uh, the coordination. I will not read all of them, but uh, I want to attract uh, your attention about the contingency response that uh, I mentioned. Is something that unfortunately we will be not capable to to decrease uh, in the next years. I mean, we should get firstly to get a, a stable ceasefire before to to be capable to reduce uh, contingency response and uh, and this immediate uh, response aspect of uh, of um, of our intervention. Uh, adapting local response to the context that is also some, some something that we try to push at the maximum because. Uh, uh, observing going on the field, you see that means uh, the one kit fit all is uh, is definitely uh, not suitable and uh, and a good experience when you go to discuss with beneficiaries and uh, uh, they got a replica of uh, of a successful experience uh, in one district and you change you don't have the same orientation you have uh, another exposure to wind uh, sometimes is getting a. Uh, uh, serious problems with uh, uh, the shelter much more affected by the elements. That means uh, uh, is uh, is something that we really uh, try to push, um, and um, and we have also another one is more and more and uh, the to 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 reduce the dependency on humanitarian aid. If you're looking at the shelter uh, shelter business, if I can say like this, shelter NFI in Yemen, we're speaking about 140 to 150 million US dollar per year. Is a huge market. Yemen is not producing none of the shelter materials. Uh, maybe a bit of uh, mud brick, uh, a bit of cement, and a, and a bit of lime. But they, all the timber is imported. Uh, most of the NFI are imported. Um, that means uh, when we look and we say, and we are in seven, eight, nine years, and when we are projecting ourselves in the future, we say, all this money is going is going to serve a needs on a, on a punctual time. But uh, how we can get that there is some materials who are locally produced uh, and can benefit much more than just the assistance. That means to get the process also benefiting the, the communities uh, for IDPs, but also for us communities. That means uh, uh, last year we initiated some pilot projects that I will detail it more during the presentation. But is this is also uh, one late motive, one uh, one driving uh, strategy uh, direction. To, to try to reduce the dependency on humanitarian aid. That means uh, we internally we try to look uh, to revisit all the kit composition and say, okay, 
if we have a condensive environment, if we have uh, colleagues from FAO, uh, colleagues from uh, from UNDP working on on resilience and uh, and uh, how we can link that with uh, the shelter uh, shelter intervention, shelter and non-food item intervention, and that will be a way to to set up uh, uh, systems. It would be of course not. Uh, Covering a lot, but <clears throat> the maximum that we will be able to to locally produce uh, uh, the the best would be the benefit for for IDPs and uh, and those communities. Next slide, please. Oh, that is just like a one uh, one reminder because we modify a bit the coordination. Um, uh, this year means uh, we have uh, one uh, one team for coordination with the national coordination in SANA, but we have also a subnational coordination. Each of them uh, is one uh, one uh, in charge of one of the color on um, on the map, and um, and uh, we had a huge number of partners. That means that is still something with a very uh, a big frustration um, due to the uncertainty and due to the the risk in terms of uh, financial management. Uh, most of the funding is uh, ending up uh, uh, with uh, UN and uh, INGO. And that means, uh, but these these guys are not uh, the majority of the of the partner who are registered. And when you say registered, they are fully registered with the papers. I mean, so we have 167 partners who signed, who did the effort to sign to say we are we are interested to contribute in shelter or non-food items or any related activities, and they did the effort also to to sign up with the minimum from formation as a number of staff, voluntary permanence, and to know most of them are very local and there is sort of a disconnection between uh, the classical humanitarian um, stakeholders like two or three uh, national big national partners those are being being an uh, ngo or un and and the the huge number of local partners and uh, is why i was Speaking about to reduce the, uh, the dependency on humanitarian aid, uh, the local partners have a unique access usually that the others do not have because they have a, a, um, a scope of work with much more limited, they have better uh, um, relation with the authorities and they are capable to, to set up if we, for example, we want to, to prefabricate all the emergency shelter frame and to, to set up some of like a, a workshop to prefabricate it. These are usually the, the best profile in terms of organization due to their um, connections, uh, their, um, their access, and uh, and we are always trying to struggle to to be the maximum uh, inclusive for all the fund appeal, trying to support them. But of course, they, they have a big lack in terms of how to write a project, how to write a program, uh, how to do a um, um, procurement satisfying uh, basic uh, procurement rule, because uh, most of them are, are, are local organization. And that that is one point also is uh, deserving to be mentioned today. And um, and and I hope that is my, my, my best wish. That means uh, maybe in five years we can get much more uh, fully active partners and uh, maybe 20 or 30 new organizations are coming from this pool of uh, local partners. Because we have competencies, we have knowledge, but in terms of architectures, uh, the humanitarian intervention is in a sort of a bubble with international organization and UN, and uh, and is difficult uh, due to uh, to the practicality how to to fundraise for a small organization, uh, how they can be complying with many rules and regulation, how they would be also sometimes more exposed to um, to the pressure of the de facto authority or de jure uh, authorities, is, is still a challenge. But uh, that is more or less how we organize. That means uh, that it may be the only map that we kept. This year, and so, uh, when you see the blue is uh, is really the um, is the south, and the, the blue is uh, Aden and Marib. Marib is the orange one that you have in the center, but uh, is also and that is a very desertic uh, uh, area. And uh, and then after that, we have on the north we have Sada. Uh, we have in the center part in the sort of a, a pink uh, salmon orange uh, is um, is a Sana that means the capital. Um, and then after that, you have the coastal area. And uh, actually, the, what is in a in yellow color is where there is a, the recent incidents uh, that is uh, is uh, Ib, Taiz, and uh, and um, Al Baida, uh, where uh, we have the, the most recent displacements. Uh, next slide, please. 
Just a few few words, and uh, because I'm, uh, I'm also time conscious, I mean, uh, adapting response to the local context. I already mentioned it. I mean, uh, that is uh, an example of what you call a Tehama emergency shelter. Tehama is a, is a district in Udaida on the coastal area, where the people uh, with their vernacular architect architectures were using like structures. That means uh, when you give them a kit, usually they don't have any issue to to set up the kit. They know how to improve. They know how to seal better the, the window. But uh, is is uh, a bit the approach. That means when we can substitute uh, some materials from, for example, Tehama is a, a vegetal, is a, is a grass with a, is growing on top of a coconut tree. I mean, this is not the, the tree itself, and this is a, I would not say a parasite, but a symbiote. So, uh, and, uh, and the people uh, traditionally uh, took it and uh, they are waving some panels, and uh, and that is good for ventilation. There is some some cons because there is sort of a transparency, and when you are putting a light inside at night, you can foresee a bit of shadow. Who can be a cultural um, limitation, but that is a is a typically a, a good example. What we call by adapting a response to the local context, and that is more for the coastal area and uh, where there is sufficient water to get uh, all this uh, grass. If you're going to Mari, where is a full desert. You will probably not use the same uh, same design, or if you are going to Ibtais or, or Sada and mountainous area, of course you will not get it, and uh, will use it on, on uh, maybe some other uh, materials like more like mud brick. And always uh, we try to to influence our partners, saying look about the vernacular architectures of the place of origin of the displays and also where they go, because sometimes they they have these different uh, traditions. That means. Uh, uh, you give the Tehama for people from the mountain, uh, they will get some challenge in order to build it. When if you did give this type of kits to the people from the, the same type of region, they will probably improve it by themselves. Next slide, please. That is also just an illustration very quickly to illustrate to breaking the emergency cycle. And so we really, really are in need of uh, of um, of getting out of constant emergency because if not in five years, we will still get this 96% of uh, emergency assistance. And we really want to um, to, uh, to to change. And so we try, we, we had some tweaks, uh, making guidelines about the repair. It's extremely difficult to get a repair in Yemen because uh, we have to, to deal with uh, HLP and, uh, and many structures are not documented. Uh, there's a lack of documentation. There's a lot of conflict also between uh, um, People and owners who different owners who get some uh, some uh, some right on the land, but uh, is a way also to to support the return. And next slide, please. And uh, also what we say, defining the right modality for intervention, and uh, and that has uh, some figures about uh, 2020, uh, the number of people were assisted by cash. And you see that means uh, we had more people assisted by cash because uh, it was a rental subsidies, and uh, and. Um, it was just an assistant. We didn't cover the full uh, the full rent. It's more uh, partial part, but it's a subsidy to 12 people to not be evicted, to not be uh, uh, throughout. And that we are using them for for the um, for the IDPs mainly in a urbanized or semi-urbanized. Uh, on the four million of IDPs, you have uh, 1.2 million who are in sites. And uh, that means you have a 2.8, uh, 2.9 who are in uh, in um, rental sectors or host family. But when we say host family, don't believe in this easy. It's just uh, they are going to relatives, and then you can get a problem of overcrowded premises. Uh, just the, the nature of the social linkage I means uh, the IDPs will go with uh, their immediate relatives. Uh, sometimes people from the tribes, if they have more space, and that it would be more like in a semi-urban, but in urban area, they probably go into land into a, a, a brother or a cousin uh, who got uh, an extra room, and uh, and you can get uh, easy uh, seven, eight people uh, sleeping in one extra room. That means uh, in terms of um, of burden for for those families, uh, usually they are not uh, they are not well off. That means uh, uh, the rental subsidies is also covering part of the utilities. Is why means is a uh, is a um, is a uh, pretty limited, and we had a, a good coverage on it. But you remember I show you the, the slide where is almost 50-50, and that is uh, managed by three or four bigger organization. Um, then next slide, please. And I saw that Nail is waiting in the lobby. <laughs> Okay, and that is uh, some illustration about uh, how we say reducing uh, uh, dependency on humanitarian aid. We had a lot of high departure uh, just for the month of June. We had 
67 file departures uh, in a in a, in the um, IDP site, that means in the camp or tent like camp, and uh, mainly uh, related to uh, for most of them to the misuse of uh, of open files. That means we had a, a stove and cooking is a, is a key issue, and that means we start to develop some uh, some rocket stove uh, um, pilots in order to to. Um, to uh, to to reduce the um, the file departure the events because it's like a semi closed file it means you you control uh, this risk but also to work on on a fuel efficiency and uh, and that could be a, a good way because they are locally produced uh, we can use a sort of a peer training uh, approach and we can involve much more the the small national organizations that means as soon as they are comfortable with design and they understood it they are capable to to give these multiplying factors to to replicate it and uh, is uh, is 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 making a, a life change for the people who are living in, uh, in the sites in order to get a, a such type of intervention. And then you have uh, these three ladies who are who are waving uh, 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 this type of uh, vegetal panel. And that is also uh, another pilot who is starting to be more and more replicated. But we have in a, in a shop, if you can say like this, so we thought also to work on the basic furniture because we have an, an, a huge issue about um, IDP living, sleeping straight on the floor for six, seven years with uh, 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 some uh, parasite and some uh, and some disease because uh, we cannot uh, change mattresses uh, every year or every second year. Usually they have like mattresses from uh, from many years uh, and the hygiene is bad and uh, and uh, using uh, local materials or like a, a wooden pallets to to do bedding uh, structures can be uh, an improvement but still with this type of philosophy trying to look local partners trying to look income generation and in order to not import something from outside but try to, to get and to improve the life of the people uh, that means uh, also what our uh, next slide please uh, I will add it on the next slide. Yeah. So that means um, um, that is also an example of Squazap. That means is uh, just to, to show you how it's used. I mean, so when there is a lot of winds, we are using also sometimes some uh, some nets in order to to hold it. There is many design now because uh, we start to get uh, the introduction of materials was done with one design, and then the 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 design uh, uh, started to 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 develop. We discover some problem, but we are solving them uh, step by step. And uh, and that is um, is one of uh, UNESHA quick impact projects. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, before to go to the ZIM innovation that we were uh, mentioning during, during last year's, uh, also one thing that we change a lot, and that is maybe a question to discuss with uh, with um, with the audience later on. We have a problem in Yemen about um, our standards are read as a the rule of law and not as a guidance. And uh, I will explain a bit. Uh, if you are going with me tomorrow in a site and uh, we, we walk in a site, it looks like uh, many sites in many, many places with all these shoes box, one after the other one. And uh, we ask people are related from, let's say, four or five shelters. There is 90 percent of chance that means the people are related. That means uh, we did during the previous years an uh, intervention looking standards, looking uh, safety distance for the fire between the structures, uh, looking uh, satisfying criteria and ticking a box, and we totally missed the uh, sociological, ethnological dimension. Uh, family are living a very large family, but not large families, that means well, they have seven children, it's already large, but uh, when you are looking and you ask questions a bit differently, say, where you are cooking, how many people are eating around the same stove, from the same stove, you realize that maybe three or four sh uh, shelters, that means we speak about 20, 30 people, are bound with something who was not entering in our, in our initial grid of reading about the, the community. And that has a direct influence on the shelter because we struggle, we have over-occupation, we cannot get the fair safety distance between structures, but if we are shifting a bit our approach, say that means now is not three families, but is a one big family with three bedrooms, three individual bedrooms. That means three, three assistants in terms of emergency or transitional shelter. 
we are making sort of a mini compound who is looking like with a probably a fence uh, uh, one uh, properly done stove but also a toilet that means we try maximum to say um to get out just about uh, uh, an immediate reading of standards but trying to look this dimension and try to inject it uh, at first it was not easy because uh, uh, formatted by six years of assistance uh, the organization when you were speaking about what is nfi and shelters they say oh uh, is a selection of beneficiaries uh, organizing the transportation organizing the distribution and making a, a, a post distribution monitoring i mean it was a pretty uh, pretty straightforward, but then now we say, okay, take one week more, uh, make this social mapping about the different uh, uh, family and subcomponents of a family, that means around the household, that means like a, a stove, how many families are living, and try to adapt. And uh, look now what is a fire safety distance, for example, is between all this uh, uh, agglomeration of uh, per, per big family, because here you will be capable to 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 set up uh, um, an efficient fire break, whereas if you are going with a shoes box aligned like a like a like by the book, you will uh, you will probably not succeed it, and then you will create more problem. A problem of privacy is a very conservative uh, country. That means uh, uh, for those who know an abaya who is covering the lady uh, despite the the eyes who are open, uh, cooking in abaya every day because they are straight in the streets is not nice. You, it's better to get a, a, a fencing uh, and to get it because people also are using the, the shelter structures for sleeping and storing and uh, and they prefer to, to live outside, especially for those uh, like uh, IDPs uh, or, or the most vulnerable one because it's a way also that's how they're organizing their life. And this part, we, we unfortunately, we totally miss it during the sixth first year because we were just under huge pressure to deliver, 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 deliver. And he is uh, requesting from the partner to stop, to get one week more, to get more social work, to know more uh, uh, in detail and to be capable to, to adapt. Uh, the intervention to the site. Okay, now a few words very quickly on the on the two tools to keep you updated about what we present last year. And I think I will end up here. The first one was Taggy, the auto tagging tool. <clears throat> uh, that means uh, from last year, we, we consult with the uh, other alternative uh, using artificial intelligence. The auto tagging tool is where I was mentioning 60 reports per year. You can imagine how to read all the different uh, geography and toponymy. That means uh, uh, this is a tool where you upload a PDF or Word file and uh, is, uh, is automatically tagging geographical location. And when you don't know, you don't recognize, uh, it's sort of uh, is a self-learning machine. That means it will uh, extract from the report where uh, the, the word or the name is, uh, is, uh, is quoted, and then the users will, uh, will say, okay, if it's, uh, for example, uh, this district in this governor rates, uh, it will know which one it is. It, uh, it, um, it is. That means you are capable to to teach the machine and to to uh, to help because when you have a lot of source of information, of course you 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 are you are lost. You say, oh, I saw this data somewhere, and you have to go and to reread many reports, and that is a way to for us to solve and to organize. And soon we will get the, the interactive map when you can go on the map and clicking on the government on the district, and you will get all the reports were presently uh, related to that. But also we introduced thematic area, is a, a use of keyword with an architecture, a sort of a, a level between different keywords. Also that is in order to for us to to proceed. Oh, that is not uh, artificial intelligence, that means how the other initiatives we are, are preparing is more a uh, pre-reading tool, because it's not, uh, of course, there's still a user who have to read it, but uh, is making in the metadata of the file uh, all the, the keywords and is extremely useful for coordination to organize uh, the, the archive and the, the library. And the second one that we want to, to show you a bit more today is a flood prediction tool. Is something also that we mentioned last year. We were showing you different maps about the flood susceptibility, the work that we did with Rich, uh, the watershed, and this year uh, we managed to upload our watershed. That means uh, the polygon where the water is collected and how it's going to the sea to upload to the MET with the, the British Meteorological Institute on their computers, and they are sending us uh, some some provision. Here, the idea was not to run after the bus, but to run in front of the bus, because this information was existing, nobody was capable to translate it, and we had to step uh, on top of our regular working hours to develop it. Can you go for the next slide, please? 
And here, for example, you have one uh, example of the bulletins that we are receiving uh, twice per day, uh, where we have uh, uh, governorates, watershed, because watershed is uh, the common uh, denominator, then the different uh, uh, way to look uh, geographical locate, and then prediction per, per time, and uh, and the rainfall. Igor, just just to interrupt. I'm sorry. I think yeah. we only have ten minutes left in case okay. you want to finish. Okay, I'm finishing. And then, that, and then there's time my, for some questions. Is, is, is my is my last slide? I think so. Is my last slide. Yeah, and and then that is the way. And here, uh, practically, is to give this information. And because we are using uh, two algorithm uh, or MIT is using two algorithm, we have one. The 48 hours are pretty precise, and then after that is just an indication. But the subnational coordinator, when you see a pattern, as you see here, like a red, red, black, red, red, and when when you sum up very quickly, you arrive to one third of the yearly rainfall because that is uh, is capable to before the flood occur to pre-inform partners and authorities and to try to pre-mobilize them, saying like, okay, guys, maybe in uh, in 24 hours we'll get on this place, this place, and this place uh, some third flood uh, incident. And he's keeping them in touch. Here is in order to, to streamline and to be much more uh, reactive, because before what we were, we were waiting that it was, uh, the flood was reported, then verification, and then after that, uh, mobilization of partners. Here we pre-mobilize, that means we still have to verify, but at minimum we know the people. I think I, I end up here my presentation, because the last slide is uh, just thank you, and I'm opening for questions. Thanks, Igor. You know, there's two questions um, there in the chat box, which probably can be combined into one, but really it was around the people in need versus the people targeted and what was the criteria for choosing those. So I'm just reading that out in case you can't um, see the chat box and then anyone who wants to wants to also answer, uh, ask a question, make a comment, you can either speak up directly or use the chat box. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, very quickly, I mean, so, uh, in terms of targeted, we have to read targeted on two ways. We have to read targeted with uh, the financial constraints, or we have to read targeted as uh, uh, the selection beneficiary of criteria. Of course, ideally, uh, uh, both are, are aligning. But uh, if we are going with, uh, with such figures uh, uh, to look about the shelter needs, uh, we are going to skyrocket. And, uh, and that will be not a, a realistic way to, to approach uh, fundraising and needs. That means uh, we were encompassing about also the feasibility, the capacity of partners, uh, the restriction of ac access by authorities. That means when we, we, we I mentioned previously, uh, three and a half million, uh, 3.2, not three and a half, 3.2 million uh, are targeted in the HRP. Uh, they are an estimation of the overall. Then after that, we speak about selection of beneficiaries is totally different because selection of beneficiaries is linked to an activity. Is uh, uh, We don't select the same beneficiaries for uh, rental subsidies and for uh, emergency shelters or an FI. That means for us, uh, the target is separate with these two concepts. So on one hand, that means is uh, the overall with sort of like aggregation of many, many information and many um, factors. And then after that, uh, when you are looking in terms of programmation parts, you are when you program uh, your activities, you have to relate uh, to what the technical working group are, are doing. Uh, we have uh, selection uh, criteria for for each of the intervention: e shelter, t shelters, uh, bedding kits, uh, uh, core NFI kits, uh, rental subsidies, and I think even uh, for for repair, if I remember well. That means we we disaggregate it, and that has to the, the concept in fact has to be split in two. Okay, the pipeline. I see it very quickly. It's an excellent idea, and I love pipeline. Um, we we try to unify a, a common pipeline. It's not only the contingency, and because uh, last year I was presenting contingency is one part of the pipeline. Um, a good, just to give you a very sim simple uh, figures. Uh, medium thermal blankets, global stockpile, seven US dollars. Local markets, big quantity, 14 US dollars. Retail market, 21 US dollars. I mean, uh, with this, certain items uh, has to be centralized and uh, and, uh, and included into the pipeline when certain items has to be locally procured. I mean, we are living with this, uh, this um, 
these, uh, these aspects. Uh, we were trying to work a lot with a colleague of IUMDRC and NRC uh, and UNHCR uh, to try to set up a pipeline. But we are uh, facing a lot of issues. For example, uh, recently, uh, I think the executive unit, I mean, so the de jure parts, uh, when we were looking at distribution partners, not the one procuring, but distributing, they got their agreements uh, denied. And uh, when they ask why, they say, oh, where is the procurement? And they have to say, but somebody else is procuring because they are better, they are more complying with uh, the tender process. And uh, But this, we are not here until now, because we have this interaction with authorities, who for them is when we centralize the com uh, common pipeline, we are uh, structuring and is less interference for for the daily um, try to to look at how you are going to procure if uh, if they know the enterprise will go to submit for tender. I mean, so we have uh, this issue. The second point that we had is a trust with a partner. Uh, uh, the three last years, it was a lot of money for Yemen. And uh, it was a sort of a, like a, a competition and um, a challenge, a run for organization to, to grow. And, uh, and, uh, and some of them didn't manage properly the growth. And uh, and is creating them, putting them on a, on the defensive position. When you want to get a multi-agency common pipeline, is uh, inducing to get a minimum of trust. That means to go and say, okay, me I have an excellent price for that and that and that, and I will buy for everybody. And those other ones say the same thing. Uh, we are still not here yet. We did move a lot, and uh, with a new uh, humanitarian coordinator, is something with moving faster than expected, because he understands the cost-saving as aspects, uh, the the way to be more structured. But but still, we we have work to do on it. And uh, for contingency stock, if you are interested, uh, we did uh, shutter clusters because uh, at first we were relying on OCHA one. We did our own contingency uh, response plan uh, in February and published in March. Interested? You just drop me a, 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 an email, and uh, I will be happy to share with you. We estimate the number of ESK and FI bidding kits per region, but also some nationals were looking about route of displacements, where we can get the first catch of IDP in order to not them doing 200 kilometers, but only 20 kilometers. And uh, and uh, and that's that's all this information are inside. Just drop me a line and uh, I will make a follow up uh, sending on bilateral. Putting partners, our national organization, uh, more or less we have like, uh, I would say six, seven, eight, Eight, uh, eight national. We have hybrids because we have some um, some uh, some uh, international organization like Quota Red Crescent, but they are all Yemeni. I mean, and that is why is very wise the, the, for for the colleague of IFRC. The Quota Red Crescent is uh, is an organization that means I have um, have a good time to work with because. Uh, they invest uh, the management of the organization representation with all Yemeni here, and that means they are much more uh, uh, sensible to to concept about uh, cultural aspect and how to interact, and uh, and not coming so much from outside. Means uh, uh, this one, I don't know if I will qualify it as international or national, but it definitely is an, uh, an active partner. And we have two or three like this, but more or less 30 international and the rest uh, and 10 national for the active partners. And uh, but when we say like this, there is a lot of um, of um, implementing partners. For example, Indonesia has like a eight or nine implementing partner. We didn't uh, disaggregate because we say the money is going through Indonesia, and then Indonesia is changing. But uh, you have to take that also in consideration. More and more international organizations are are not subcontracting but partnering with uh, with national organization. Um, Thanks, yeah. Diego. I think we've got probably down to the very last minute if there's any last comment from anyone and then if not i'll i'll just um close the session okay i put also my unhcr uh, email mailbox uh for you have the one uh, for kimja was putting uh, the the web page where there's my uh, my email munir with the wonderful uh, deputy also will be uh, making a follow-up and i'm putting now my uh my UNESCO one I means don't hesitate to get more information because I was going very fast and uh, and uh, we're here to to uh, to guide you. Thanks very much, Igor, for taking the time to prepare the update and thank you everyone for being online. It was very comprehensive. We know that you're in a really complicated situation there with um, protracted crisis, 
new disaster, outstanding caseload where people can't return home. So there's a lot of challenges on your shelter options, but it sounds like there's a lot of innovative work going on. So great, and thanks for the presentation. It's really, really um, important. And thank you to everyone for being online. It's good to see the participation. We know there's a lot of people also away with summer holidays. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much. It will be the same time next week um, for our next update. Everyone can find the details online and we'll also send out an update. So um, best wishes to everyone and thanks for participating. And thanks again, Igor and Monir and all your colleagues there who've been working so hard in Yemen. All the Thank best. you. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.